Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about Cheerleader Massacre 2. So, I previously reviewed uh, the first Cheerleader Massacre movie on the channel. And I was, uh, I was not really a fan of that one. This one, um, I, this one I, I enjoyed a lot more. I actually, I actually was a, a fan of Cheerleader Massacre 2. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I had a decent time with this. It was, uh, it was an, an enjoyable little slasher movie. So yeah, um, Cheerleader Massacre 2 was pretty cool. Uh, just, just a heads up, you know, the original, uh, Cheerleader Massacre is, is very hard to find. I don't think you can really, uh, rent it anywhere online. Like, you can't really pay to rent it anywhere. And the DVD, uh, for that, for the original Cheerleader Massacre is very, uh, expensive. I bought the DVD, but I think I spent like 20 bucks or something. So the, the, the first movie is hard to find. This movie, Cheerleader Massacre 2, like you cannot find at all. You cannot rent it anywhere. Um, I, you know, I don't even like know if a DVD exists. Like the only DVD I was able to find online, it was like some Japanese copy that was like sold out everywhere and it was going for like 50 bucks. But, um, Usually, usually I don't do this because I, you know, I like just paying for stuff. You know, I got a jobby job, you know, I got some extra walking around money. So, you know, I like just paying for stuff, being a good stand up citizen. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want like bad karma or, or, or anything. So I just like, I just pay for movies. Either I'll buy it physically or I'll rent it or I'll watch it on streaming. Um, you know, so usually I don't do this, but for Cheerleader Massacre 2, I had to, um, I had to be a sleaze bag and, and, uh, you know, I had to, uh, I had to watch it, uh, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow style, if you know what I mean, because I don't want to incriminate myself. I used to always watch DVDs, uh, back in the day and they'd be like, you wouldn't steal a car, you wouldn't you wouldn't steal a purse, so why would you, uh, why would you steal a movie? Um, I didn't, like, steal the movie, but I, I watched it Captain Jack Sparrow style, if you know what I mean. So usually I don't do that. Like I said, I'm a stand-up guy. I'm a productive member of society. I pay for stuff. Um, it, I'm not saying if you do that, you're not a productive member of society. I'm just being funny, but yeah, um, if anyone is watching this and they're like, how the heck did you watch this? How the heck do I see this? Like, you're going to just have to find it somewhere online. It's not really available anywhere, like, uh, legitimately. So, yeah, there you go. But anyways, uh, you know, I was a fan of this one. And, yeah, I thought it was a lot better than the, the first Cheerleader Massacre. So, there's that. Um, but before I get, uh, you know, too deep in the video, before I ramble too long... I'm going to give you all a quick little plot summary. So you have these uh, these young ladies. They're going to cheerleader camp. They're going to compete in a uh, cheerleading competition. And whoever wins the competition, uh, you know, gets a scholarship. And while all these girls are at cheerleader camp, uh, people start getting killed by all these little robots. So there you go. That's the plot summary. Um, the first point that I want to get into is I have quite a few positive points because like I said, I was a fan of this. I thought it was a lot better than the first one. You know, it's not the best movie ever, but I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, kind of rating it, uh, for what it is. I'm kind of, like, I, you know, I, I went in knowing it's not going to be like the best movie ever, but for, uh, a direct to DVD slasher movie called Cheerleader Massacre 2, it was pretty darn good. So, uh, there's that. And yeah, way better than the first one. The first one I, I was not, not into at all. But anyways, 
getting into my first point, which like I said is a positive. I I really liked the the location and uh, the the setting of this movie. So, like I said in my little uh, plot summary, this this movie uh, takes place at cheerleader camp, which cheerleader camp it's the the location it, it's just like a summer camp, and it I don't know it just it totally has that summer camp feel. You have all these little rustic wood cabins. You have a lot of uh, greenery and forestry. It's, I, I mean, this is, even though it's not technically a summer camp slasher, it's it's pretty much a summer camp slasher, and you have that beautiful summer camp setting. So I'm a sucker for uh, any slasher movie that takes place at a summer camp. So I really liked the setting. I thought it was great. Um, a uh, random point that I would like to get in uh, get into is they're early on in in the movie when the main character and her friend are driving to the cheerleader camp they see this car on the side of the road and the one the one of the girls is like hey we should stop and the other girl's like no that's not our problem like have you heard I forgot exactly what the story was called but she's like did you hear the story of the good Samaritan and she goes into this story about this uh, guy who tried to who, who saw a car on the side of the road and tried to help and then he was killed and we actually get to see that story play out but I, I really liked uh, I thought that was like a, a smart decision early on because you know the, the, in like a lot of instances in in movies and in real life like you you just have to mind your own business like if you see a, a car on the side of the road if you see some crazy situation going on you think hey you know someone might need help like that's not that's not your problem like I maybe I'm just paranoid because I watch uh, so many horror movies but that's what I always think, like, maybe someone's trying to scam me, maybe someone's, you know, trying to hurt me, like, asking for help, or you see someone who, like, looks kind of desperate, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna put my head down, go about my business, because, like, I, I don't know if this person's a serial killer, so, um, I really liked that smart decision, and the fact that they just minded their own business, because that's how, how you go, you, you have to go about stuff, unfortunately, like, you know, uh, for the most part, you can trust people, but there's there's crazy people out there, especially nowadays. So I thought that was like a really smart decision. And I like that because that's what I would do. I'd be like, you know what? That's unfortunate that that car is on the side of the road, but that's not my problem. I don't know who's driving that car. I'm just going to go about my business. Like I, at the end of the day, all you really can do is like call the police. They're, you know, they're qualified to deal with that and then you can go go about your business you know so uh, I thought I, I, I like that I thought that was smart and then in the little like I said when the the one girl is telling the story of the Good Samaritan um, it plays out on screen and we get to see it and the guy in the story who got killed he can't get away because uh, the car on the side of the road is a stick shift and he doesn't know how to drive a stick shift and I just I thought that was really funny and it reminded me of the movie uh buffalo 66 like i if i instantly thought of that where uh you know vincent gallo's character is like what is this a shifter car i don't know how to drive a shifter car i don't know how to drive these things my cars shift themselves so um yeah the fact that the guy like didn't know how to drive a stick shift reminded me of uh, buffalo 66 which is a great movie so yeah that was awesome um Jumping into another very random point, uh, later on in the movie, there's there's two uh, guys and they are, you know, they're they're getting down and dirty with uh, their girlfriends. Like, I mean, they're not like having sex, but you know, they're like you know making out, feeling them up. They're getting they're getting intimate with it. So these two guys, they're you know you know, having some fun times with their girlfriends and they, they both like go in the woods to, you know, check, check, uh, check something out. 
and both of them are like, I'll be right back, and they instantly die. So, you know, everyone knows that's a, that's a huge trope in, in horror movies. If you say, I'll be right back, you're going to instantly die. And, you know, that's especially, that was like especially popularized by uh, Scream. That's what like Randy was saying. Like, if you say, I'll be right back, you'll get killed. That's one of the rules. That's one of the tropes. And I, I just thought that was funny that like this this movie there there's like a lot of clichés and tropes in this and this came out like well after scream so you know people knew about the rules but the filmmakers making this they didn't they weren't trying to like subvert expectations at all or make like a like a like self-aware meta slasher which like a lot of slashers were after scream this is just like a it's just like a, this is just a straight up, uh, slap, like a straight up slasher. It pretty much has all the tropes. You got nudity, um, you got people saying, I'll be right back and dying. Um, but actually it, it does actually change things up a little bit, which I'll get into later. But, uh, but yeah, I just thought that was, that was like fun and it was so cliche, which is, Part of the reason why I like slasher movies because they are so cliche. Like, of course, I actually genuinely like them, but some of the some of the, like the aspects of slasher movies are almost like unintentionally funny. So I like that too. But I also like genuinely like creepy, scary stuff. So I I don't know. So yeah, I I, I just thought that was like funny little cliche. The I'll be uh, right back situation, um, and. My next point uh, kind of addresses what I just said that this this movie does have some unique stuff going on. So um, I thought the whole killer robot angle was pretty fresh. You know, uh, every every slash movie it's it's pretty much just a guy with a knife, which I'm totally cool with. But uh, this this movie had these little like CGI killer robots and some people would not like that because all of the robots are CGI and a lot of the kills are CGI but it didn't bother me I thought it was it was kind of fun like I've never really uh, seen that I don't I've never really seen another slasher movie with all these like little robot killers I think that one movie called Chopping Mall it, it's like a killer robot but I, I have not seen that yet I gotta watch that eventually but anyways uh yeah, I thought the little killer robot angle was unique. All the, all the robots, they're like these little, there's like different ones, but there's like these little like spider looking ones. And then there's these ones that are like these flying, uh, discs with like razor blades on them. And, um, the kills in this were decent. There was, you know, some decent blood and there were, there was a little bit of variety with the kills. The kills weren't the best. But, you know, it was like a lower budget movie. At least it, there weren't like a lot of cutaways. You did get to see some blood. And like I said, there was different variations of these robots. So, you know, uh, you got the giant flying blade ones where, you know, people are getting all sliced up. And then you got the little spider ones. And then there's this one where it was like a heat lamp one. It just like burned this guy in his car. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I liked that this movie had these like killer robots. I thought that was kind of, you know, unique. And honestly, the kills were not bad. There was one kill that I really liked where this guy got chopped in half, like vertically. Um, it was CGI, but I don't know. I still thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, the kills were not that bad in my opinion. Um, and then I got like a, a few uh, remaining points here and then I'm gonna head out. And with these points, I am going to get into spoiler territory, like especially not really with the first one, but with the second one. So if you have not seen this movie and you don't want to uh, get spoiled, uh, pause the review, watch the movie and then come back. So there's your warning. Uh, so, yeah, basically, I know. OK, so this movie, this is this is Cheerleader Massacre 2. It's in the overarching Massacre franchise. It's related to, you know, the Slumber Party Massacre movies and the Sorority House Massacre movies. So this 
this connection that I'm making isn't going to make sense because it's not actually connected to these movies. But I, there were like me personally, I saw like a couple parallels to the Sleepaway Camp movies, not like intentional parallels, but, um, you know, they're at the, the cheerleaders are at this summer camp and well, I guess it's not technically a summer camp, it's cheerleader camp, but it, it's pretty much a summer camp. Uh, and, you know, usually at a summer camp, you, you'll have a lake, but this this uh, s summer camp only has a pool, which is weird. And uh, I don't know, that just made me think of Sleepaway Camp 2, where, you know, they're at summer camp, but they're just like hanging out at a pool. So, um, yeah, that definitely reminded me of uh, Sleepaway Camp 2. And then uh, basically, this is the, the spoiler part. So... The killer is revealed to be the main girl's best friend and her whole motive is, you know, she was like, she tried to be a cheerleader, but she didn't make the team and she was like humiliated. So she wants to get revenge against these cheerleaders and she's really smart. I, I think she's like um, into like physics or some, some sort of science based thing. She's really smart and she hates cheerleaders because they kind of like you know humiliated her but also she thinks they're you know like uh she thinks like the fact that so many girls want to be cheerleaders is bad because she thinks you know cheerleaders put women in a bad light because they're just like wearing skimpy clothes or whatever i mean in the in the movies not in real life but um that's what she was saying in the movie and uh basically she, her plan is like she wants to kill all cheerleaders but then like part of her motive is also she she like hates men and she wants to kill all men because she thinks they just like look at women as objects and they're like basically uh you know they like they, they just don't treat women right so her her motive was confusing because if she hated men and wanted to kill men, why wouldn't she just kill men? Like, why would she kill cheerleaders? Because she was, like, pro-woman, and cheerleaders are women. So if, if she hated men so much and that was her motive, why wouldn't she just kill men? I don't, I, I don't know. I thought that was kind of confusing, but I still, I thought it was a good reveal. And, you know, it was, like, a decent motive, so... Um, it was kind of unique. So, but anyways, uh, the whole, like another, th th I, I thought this was kind of a connection to the Sleepaway Camp movies as well, because like I said, once again, not an intentional connection. These movies have nothing to do with those movies, but I'm a big Sleepaway Camp fan. So I just was noticing that stuff as, as I was watching it. But basically how she just wants to like kill cheerleaders for no reason. That reminded me of Sleepaway Camp uh, 3 when Angela is asking the racist girl like, uh, so, you know, do you smoke? Do you drink? Um, are, are you a cheerleader? And then she like kills her, like, you know, ha like she like strings her up on the flagpole and drops her just because she's a cheerleader basically. Um, and that, rem like, that reminded me of this, where it's like, like, what's up with uh, all these, um, all these s slasher villains just, like, hating on cheerleaders and thinking people are inherently bad just because they're cheerleaders? I mean, maybe in, like, the movie world it makes sense, because in, in movies, cheerleaders are always depicted as, like, you know, kind of snobby and, and, you know... They're, they're like kind of bullies and they like treat all the other girls terribly and they're kind of like ditzy and stuff. But I don't know, in real life, like cheerleaders are normal. It's just like another sport. Like, you know, you could be like the nicest, most wholesome person ever and be a cheerleader. So, I don't know. I just thought it was, it was, um, the, the killer's motive in this was kind of funny, but it was still decent. But, um, I don't know. I just... I, it, it reminded me of Sleepaway Camp 3 as well because, you know, one of the reasons why Angela killed that one girl 
was simply just because she was a, a cheerleader. So, yeah, um, I had to make that little connection. I just I just had to shout out, you know, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 because those are fantastic movies. But anyways, those were my last couple points that I wanted to get into. And now I'm going to get into my recommendation and head out. So, uh, you know what? Like I said, I did actually think this movie was pretty decent. I was a fan, so you know what? I I would I would recommend this movie. You don't you don't really have to see uh, the first Cheerleader Massacre to understand this one. There's really no connection other than the title, and they both include cheerleaders getting killed. So. Uh, yeah, I would recommend this. Um, you know, don't don't buy the Japanese DVD and spend fifty dollars. But if you could, uh, you know, find this movie uh, Captain Jack Sparrow style and watch it for free, I think that it's a it's a it's a fun little cheap little slasher movie. Like, don't go in expecting this to be a top tier slasher, but you know, it, it, it's fun. You got some good nudity, decent kills, uh, some killer robots. Like, it's just fun. It's just, it's not like a, it, it's just like a, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it has all the tropes. It has all the cliches. You got killer CGI robots. It's just like, it's just a fun, cheap little slash movie. So if you could watch this movie for free, I would recommend checking it out because I think it is kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, there's my little recommendation. And that has been my review of Cheerleader Massacre 2. Thank you all very much for watching and peace out.